Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Anwar Youssef Dunbar, and this is Big Discussions 76, Science and Technology. First of all, please like this video, please share it, and please subscribe to my channel. Well, this is an impromptu video. Uh, I thought of this after listening to one of my favorite content creators and supporters, uh, BGS Ibmore. And one of um, uh, something BGS is passionate about is the education of young black boys. Um, also, BGS and Dr. T. Hassan Johnson, uh, who I may be able to um, potentially collaborate with uh, someday. But one of the things they both talk about is the level of education or the lack of education of uh, black boys in uh, California. Uh, particularly in um, cities like Los Angeles and then what happens to them is they ascend into higher education in the uh, at the college and university level and one of the things BGS and Dr. Tia San Johnson talk about regularly is uh, the reading level of um, these young black boys and what happens to them as they try to ascend in education um, without having those basic skills. And I think in his video, what, what inspired me to shoot this was he said something about the stems. I'm going to have to go back and listen to it again. But early on in my content on this channel, I remember emphasizing reading. And so I just wanted to shoot this video to say that uh, a crucial and a critical aspect of doing the sciences and being trained in the STEMs and going on to pursue a STEM career is a love for reading. So I guess this, this video is for parents with young people and also STEM advocates. Uh, I've been to the Congressional Black Caucus annual legislative conference and I've seen uh, STEM panels, STEM advocacy panels. I haven't seen a lot of scientists up there uh, and that's not a shot at uh, the CBC but um, someone later told me that they're very passionate about STEM advocacy but I, I just when I sat in on some of those panels I didn't really see any actual um, STEM practitioners, those trained in um, the hard sciences with bench science experience or those actually running simulations for rocket launches and um, those designing um, all of the technologies uh, and the medical breakthroughs that you know we're using um, every day. So I'm, what I'm saying is that it's one thing to advocate for increased minority participation in the STEMs. Uh, and it's one thing to want more money for STEM programs and those kinds of things. But at the very heart of it, at the very heart of the sciences, is um, curiosity. So it helps to have a curious and flexible and malleable mind but you also need to have um, a love for reading because much of science is not just well, a part of science is being out on the edges and on the frontier discovering new knowledge but a part of that is actually sitting down and reading and studying and figuring out what's already known and it's from knowing what's already known, uh, from there you can think about what needs to be discovered. And you also get a feel for what not to repeat. Um, in many instances, you don't want to reinvent the wheel, so to speak. Um, and so I'm saying this to say that uh, going forward, uh, there are going to be more STEM jobs and more STEM careers. 
and some people are going to have access to those and some people aren't going to have access to those and one of the keys for getting access to those STEM careers is uh, a love for reading and the ability to read and think and process information and to come up with ideas of your own and to you know read the work of a collaborator and then to reach out to that collaborator um, perhaps for partnerships or perhaps or perhaps for the finding of new knowledge and so and it doesn't uh, you know as a young person it doesn't take you know it's not rocket science uh, that love has to be introduced somewhere and then uh, the child has to have access to books in many lower income communities access to books is the issue so kids don't um, have a lot of books in the house I did some work with uh, JetBlue a couple of years ago uh, I think they had a campaign called Soar with Reading and I had a uh, I did a series of um, I wrote a series of pieces with them uh, I don't really know what happened to uh, or with those efforts um, so I want to acknowledge JetBlue and uh, Isima Gibbs I think she spearheaded that effort um, but one of the things that I learned in in those collaborations was that in many communities in lower income communities there's just not access to books in in specific homes um, but then the other question is if what happens when children are born into homes where there's already not a love for reading so the parents might not know that the books need to be in the house and that the children need to be regularly learning how to read um, and uh, process information in that way it doesn't have to be the most kids don't have to start with the most complex books it could be comic books me and my brother early on were um, we were reading the Justice League and Batman I was a DC guy so I was reading Justice League and, and the Batman and um, my brother was reading uh, Shazam and the Flash and I think he was a bit of a Marvel guy as well and then even later in life he continued collecting graphic novels and he even he even shared some of those with me and so I'm saying that to say that comic books were uh, a major vehicle for me learning how to read in addition to uh, when I became interested in sports, I regularly got copies of um, NBA preseason yearbooks and even NBA trading cards. And I would read the back of the cards and see where the players went to school and what teams they played for. And all that is reading and just teaching your mind how to study and acquire and assimilate information. So I just wanted to... In, in, in my day job right now, reading is everything. I'm a regulatory scientist. Uh, I've talked about that a little bit on this channel, and I probably will revisit it um, later on in greater detail. But I'm saying that to say that in any STEM and in any science career you pursue, reading is going to be all throughout that. And uh, reading and writing. Uh, if you haven't, check out my interview my recent interview with um, a colleague and friend, Rafael Perino, who works in aerospace. It's a long interview, but it's an hour well spent. And in that interview, we talk about how writing and reading and oral communication are key pieces of getting involved uh, in the STEMs. So I'm going to stop this here. I have to run and do something else. Please let me know if you have any comments or questions in the comments section below. Please like this video, please share it, and please subscribe to my channel. Um, I'm going to quote my father here, who is a retired educator. And he uh, once told another young person, those who read succeed. So with that, I'll stop. As always, remember that your attitude determines your altitude.
Take care, and I'll talk to you the next time. Bye-bye.